Today I'm hunting with my brother-in-law Heath Walk as we venture into the central Pennsylvania wilderness that very few hunters will even dare to venture into. But the problem is once we do get a buck, how in the world do we get it out of here? You guys probably can't even hear me, it's so windy. stuff ready for tomorrow's hunt. We're hitting yeah. the mountains. And I got my little lock charm here. She's gonna give me a kiss on the cheek. And that's what's gonna, that's how I'm gonna get a big buck tomorrow. Go ahead, right there. Oh, there we go, big buck tomorrow. Just as easy as that. I'm gonna have to start selling those little cheek kissies. What about you? I gotta fluff that, that's lucky right there. I'll fluff that up. There we go, right, yeah. on, the, right on the trigger finger, yep. Yeah. Yes. No scar yesterday. Hey guys, stick in there to the end of the video. I want to show you guys my little secret on my cold weather, late season uh, layering system that allows me to stay out in the cold longer. Using base maps, I would like to show you guys a couple ways that I like to steal hunt stalking whitetails in the snow. The first way is I like to stalk out the edge or the rim of a canyon. I do it slowly by taking five steps glassing, taking five steps glassing. And I like to be able to see the flat above and I like to be able to see the canyon below. The second way is to go up the canyon. That way I can see the canyon walls as I stalk up the middle. That's not your goal, it's so bad. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so I got some news. I have to apologize because we couldn't film it, but Ethan and I just laid the smack down on a pretty good Pennsylvania buck. We're out in the public land this morning and we've already covered over two miles and just glass and glass and glass and out here in the snow. I looked down in the scope and as soon as he turned his head, I knew. Big buck down. We were meant Crushed to Crushed him. <laughs> we smoked him. <laughs> Did you see him crash? Uh -huh. he, he was snowplowed. Oh, 
I don't know how to do this. Should we get it? Should we get it? I think I got him in the shoulder. Oh, you used one. I wish I had a doe tag. I could there's a big pack of doe at this far. Yeah, listen, we're we're so deep that we're going to have to probably pack him out. Yes, sir. Guys, this is amazing. So this is this is my second public land buck I've ever shot. I shot dozens of deer in PA. Um, but uh, two years ago, I shot a really good public land buck. And I tell you what, we haven't seen any hunters out here. I mean, like, it's, it's, the, it's the middle of the first week. And there's there's so much public land in PA that, you know, coming out here in the snow, is this is one of the funnest hunts. Like, and when I think about hunting, like doing my favorite hunt, this is my favorite hunt. Out here in the snow, trying to find these bucks. And uh, they, they must have literally just got up and started feeding because we saw some deer early that were bedded down. But these ones were definitely up moving around. There's five deer in this group too. Yeah. Nine deer total. Yeah. I mean, if we weren't so far out here, because we're going to have to backpack this deer out, I probably could have filled my doe tag too. It's just, you know what, let's concentrate on the buck right now, but I can't wait to see this thing. You have you carrying two out. <laughs> two out. That was awesome. Ninth deer we saw today. There's, there's a bunch of tracks back in here. So coming up just right over the ridge over here, there's a ravine and we've covered some deer tracks and me and Tori was just talking about. There's like zero acorns this year in PA in our area. So we found the scrub oak. So you could tell that that's what the deer have been literally living off of during this winter. But look at this deer. Yes, sir. Dude, he's nice. Look at that old bruiser. That's an old deer. That is awesome. This is exactly what we came for. I told Heath this morning, I said, I don't need to shoot a mountain. I want a mature buck. And that's exactly what he is. That deer's at least a four-year-old. Yeah. I'm like seriously legit four-year-old. I, I think look, so. Look, there's lines of his ears. You can yeah. cut them up. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So I would say he's definitely a four-year-old. And this is all, this, like all these, we're up in the mountains. A lot of your Pennsylvania mountain deer, this is exactly what they look like. But look how much he's been rubbing. He's Crack him back just a little bit so you can see him a little better. He's got there. a little hoard there. Out there, the group of does. <laughs> the old gun works. So this is my, this is, I broke in the gun works today. This is my first deer with, with my new gun works. He didn't go 40 yards either. He didn't go 20. He was right underneath <laughs> that pine strip air feeding when Tori crushed him. Man. Sorry we didn't get the shot. <laughs> it was yeah. too quick. I'm it was sorry. It was on the knees, Heath, off my shoulder. <laughs> well, Heath asked Game me, time. Like, should we try to film it real quick? And the deer was starting to move out of the shooting lane. There's not many lanes. And I was like, mm, no. The, Game you guys, time. You guys don't understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Heath got down on his knees. I put the gun on Heath's shoulder and shot. I, my GoPro died or I would have filmed it with this. But man, this is awesome. This is one of those deals where we parked my truck down low and then we had to drive his truck up to where we wanted to start. Um, we are just a little over two miles in. And of course, we, we figured out the route we wanted to take on base map beforehand, which is, <laughs> base map is a game changer. But um, the deal with this buck is we're a little over two miles, but the total trip is 6.2 miles. So we still have to backpack him out over four miles <laughs> so we're not even halfway through this hunt and we ran into this buck and uh we're either in 4d or 5d here central pennsylvania public game lands you know heath and i we met at sheets this morning we grabbed some burritos and some coffee and and i uh, just kind of took our time but this is dream of this this yeah this, <laughs> this is what it's all about like i'm literally like twitter pated right now like stoked out of my mind like i told my wife last night like i'm literally addicted to hunting like it's all I think about, it's all I want to do. And if I'm hunting the next day, I can't even sleep. I slept like an hour or two last night because like I'll go lay down. I'll be like, oh, I forgot to put this in my pack and I'll go pack my backpack again or I'll go do this or I'll go make sure the coffee's ready for the morning. I just, it's all I think about. And, and it all pays off when it ends this way. It doesn't always end this way. Um, last year, my son took a really good buck. I ended up not getting a buck mainly because, well, I had, I had to tag his deer through the, the mentor program. But for the two years ago, shot a great buck that was in the 130s on public land up in the mountains, a completely different area from where we are right now. And I mean, coming out here in the snow, I mean, this is just, this couldn't get any better. Like, I don't, I don't know what could possibly happen to make this experience any better than what it is. As good as it gets, dude. It's as good as it gets. Give me some there, buddy. <laughs> so, I mean, the whole morning was awesome. Just being able to, to move slow. Whenever you do this type of steel hunting, you literally have to take five steps and glass, five steps, glass, five steps, glass. But it helps out so much when you're in the snow. 
So this is my first buck with my new Gunworks 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, so I, I'm shooting the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor Terminal Velocity from Federal, and it just it just smoked them. I mean, we shot and he ran. I mean, didn't go 20. <laughs> I mean, it was perfect. So I'm pumped, man. I feel I feel super blessed that that God would allow me to have this memory and this experience. I almost feel kind of unworthy. I always kind of feel that way, but um, it's just, it's, a, it's amazing that this is one more thing that I can, I can put on my, my memory timeline for my life. Um, not many people shoot big bucks in PA. So for me to shoot a mature buck um, is just, I'm ecstatic right now. I mean, I literally feel like I could just cry. So I'm excited. We're, we're, we're way, way out of range of cell service. So I'm so pumped to, to get some pictures back to Heather. And, and, and uh, I don't think I'm going to tell the kids. I think it'd be better just to show up and, and show Zayn because they, they love that. Love it when daddy backs in with a buck. So they think I'm a good hunter. I'm going to show you back to on a, on a backpack this time, though, not the full deer. <laughs> you, we're not is... toting that bad boy out four well, miles. The great news. He will be in our packs. <laughs> So we literally just showed you guys, Zame, Zame shot a, a spike this year, shot a really good buck last year, this year shot a spike, um, and uh, that deer is still up in our cooler, so uh, I'm really pumped to go back, we'll get some pictures together and, and be able to kind of, he'll have some hot cocoa, I'll have some coffee, and, and we'll have ourselves a memory. It's awesome. Good job, buddy. Thanks, man. So, I'm just going to carry quick. Lord, thank you so much for this animal, Lord. Thank you that it gave its life to, to feed my family, Lord. You know, Zay, what an unbelievable memory um, that Zayn and I got bucks this close together and were able to, to um, share this rifle season together and, and with Heather and the rest of our family. Lord, thank you uh, for my fellowship out here with, with Heath. Him and I being able to have really good conversation and just spend some time out here together has been really great. And uh, I just, I love you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord, that, you know, may Thank all the you. glory go to you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Boom. That's good stuff, dude. That's awesome. That's what Pennsylvania is all about <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's cool. Seal it up. So, right. <laughs> 11. 9 11. So, right. Today <laughs> is November 3rd, which is my youngest son, my, my, my third son, my fourth child. Today's his birthday. How cool is that? We're celebrating him. My oldest birthday is in a couple days, so we're celebrating their birthday this evening. We'll, we'll, let's just call him the birthday buck. There he is. But I've got the tag, strap that in the old ear, and then we're going to get on out of here. All right. So he's going to start on the buck. I am running up this hill to try to get some cell phone service. I'm supposed to have a meeting <laughs> with us. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty important meeting, but I'm supposed to have it in less than an hour. So I'm trying to get to the top of a hill where I can get service and send a message out. And then Heath and I will finish backpacking the buck out and quartering them out and getting all the meat loaded up. He's already skinning the buck. I'm making my way back to him right now. And, uh, and then uh, we got a quarter of the meat out too. Gotta get my tag on the buck. And um, I sent a message to Heather. I hope she gets it. She's at work right now. She's gonna be so pumped. Doing all the work. I'm in my backpack. You can see it all laid out in the rocks. So 
Jeez. Right quarter, shoulders, neck, liver, flanks. Look at the heart. Straps. Oh boy. We take it all out. Those federal terminal velocities do good. They do good. With the, with the bottom part of the shoulder on. Yeah. Liver, you can. Yeah, definitely liver. There's flanks and liver. Flanks in. Oh. Liver. That'll be for tonight. The heart, I don't think is much left of that. I don't think we're eating that. <laughs> you might be able to take a bite right now, Tor, if you want some, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's some gut on it. I swallowed. <laughs> There's some gut on it. Hey, high five. Skinning, quartering, and packing up the buck only took 23 minutes from the first cut to zipping up the packs, and that's with Heath doing most of the work. If you had two people or if you really rushed, you could do it in under 20 minutes. All right, here she is. So this is how we're going to pack them out. I almost wish I had more orange, but we put an r tracks hat on them just because we felt like that was fitting. But <laughs> I actually might get them mounted this way on like an old backpack frame and just backpack them. <laughs> you know, just set, set the backpack on my wall in my house. I think it'd be pretty cool. Got even some ass for PA. That's big. He's really heavy. Leaving some R tracks. <laughs> right there in the snow. Some R tracks in, some R tracks out. <laughs> I'd just take the draw the whole way up then. You know what I mean? Down the bottom there would be easier walking. Instead yeah. of fighting the mountain there like we did a way in. Dude. <laughs> two miles. Well, it's over two miles, but tag going. I got the meat and the buck on my back. And I tell you what, this cootie pack's nice. Traversing up and down the Appalachian Mountains is no easy feat. If the snow gives way and you go down, it's extremely hard to get back up when you have a pack well over 100 pounds. About time you catch up. <laughs> I'm waiting here for 15, 20 minutes for you. I'm just soaking in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> One leg down, 10 more to go. So Going up the you, mini gorge. How many bucks were you a part of shooting in the past? Like, you, you got four bucks down this year, right? Four days, four bucks. Four days, four bucks. It's been a great season so far. That's not normal in PA. Normally you hunt yeah. the full two weeks to have an opportunity at one decent buck. Yeah, that's crazy. Our whole family's doing really good. Three mature bucks, then Iris got her first buck, which was just a call spike. Man looks like right there coming out of the woods, 60 to 80 pound heavier than he went in. <laughs> it's a good way. It's a good way. It's a good day. <laughs> I'm happy. I have to keep reminding myself. This is a good thing. <sighs> This is the times you're here that you're thankful for your your brothers, mostly brothers in Christ also. The time you get to spend together, you never forget. How are you making out? Pounds. I had an extra 50 pounds of sticks on my back. <laughs> Just for running through the pine trees. <laughs> Camouflage. Let's get going. Hydrate again. Hydrate again. All right, I'm good to go. Walking through. This thick snow socks. 
trying to dig in the up the mountain. It's actually much deeper than it looks like on camera. It's almost the point where you gotta get on all fours to make it up over. But he's coming. And it's starting to get thick. America. Oh good, I just caught my second wind. Just so you can see how freaking When I played high school football, we did this thing. I was a junior high Valley Hornet. And we used to, in the fourth quarter, we used to always put our hands up and we would say, the swarm is coming. Just say, if you see me crying, walking like this, you know why. <laughs> it's winter, you're in a t-shirt. You know you're putting on some miles when you're wearing a t-shirt in winter. This isn't even possible. It's not even possible to come through this stuff. It's, it's a little thicker, it's for sure. Okay. When you got 18, 19 inches hanging out on those on your pack, and you, it it tends to get hooked on everything. Hunter arrives. This would be way easier if I had my mullet. I knew something was missing, man. This is my fault. I brought this on myself. You deserve this. I deserve. You this. deserve that. I deserve this. I keep telling myself. The last leg. There she is. Still lots of deer tracks around, even though it's getting up to where there's a lot of hunting pressure. When we pulled in this morning, we were actually the the fifth or sixth vehicle that pulled into this parking spot. But most of the time, the average PA hunter may go this far, up to a mile. But instead, the ears. Oh, I think that was from this morning. But when you get back in there, two, five miles, usually you seclude yourself. I wonder if everybody hunts back where we were. But hey, I'll give you a little guide tip. If you take water in the field, cut the plastic off the sides. It's super noisy. Which, it's still noisy, just not as noisy. Aqua. That's real, the last leg. Got him here. We got back to the public land to exit. There was like a couple cars here this morning, but they're they're literally pulling in everywhere. <laughs> they heard the news. They heard the news about my buck. But we finally got back. 4.5 miles. We packed her out. The birthday buck. The R tracks buck. So Honest that's, to that's, here, look, this is how the typical Pennsylvania hunter is. This is a typical Pennsylvania hunter. Right, there's their vehicles. You keep the truck in sight. Can you see the orange? See the orange? Where's Waldo? Look, that is your, look, he's hunting right there. He's just standing there. That is your, that's your normal Pennsylvania hunter right there. About at the very, very most, a quarter, maybe a half mile from the vehicle. Okay. No, oh. no, no, that guy's <laughs> 20 yards from the vehicle. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the kiddos out, show them the buck. They're gonna be so pumped. Hey, buddy. Guess what? I got a buck. Do you want to see it? Yeah, it's in my truck. I got a big buck. Yeah, I got a big buck. Come here. It's right there. See? 
shoes on. You need shoes on? Yeah, a buff fight. <laughs> That's a huge, like, a really huge buck. For public land, that's a really, really good public land buck. So, we, we covered a very large area. I like the color. I like the darkness of it. Yeah, he's got great color. Yeah, he's got a really good mass. Really good mass. You know, that's like your stereotypical. That buck I shot two years ago, kind of your stereotypical mountain buck. Had a little bit better time length, but he had mass and he was dark. That's how he is. He's got like that mountain buck look. That great mass. I like how he curls in. Yeah. I like how that, he's an older deer. That evening after preparing the meat to Zabin Eyes Bucks, we headed out to celebrate my son's birthday. Get it ready. Right. We couldn't have had a more perfect day. Go home, loser. Nobody cares about your buck. This episode is brought to you by Federal Ammunitions. Click the link in the description to see some of our favorite ammos for whitetail hunting. Guys, just real briefly, I want to tell you about my layering system that I'm using this specific hunting season. What you see here is what I would wear if I was sitting for a long period of time, which most Pennsylvania hunters, that's what they do. They sit for long periods of time out in the snow, out in the cold. So what I'm doing is I have a, a hard shell on top. So this is the Scree hard scrabble uh, vest, and then I also have a jacket. And uh, it's the huge benefit to putting this on top is breaking the wind and it's pretty water resistant. So it keeps you safe from the elements. Underneath is my down jacket. So this down jacket is a, is a big insulator. It packs up about that big. And the problem with down is it's really warm, but it's, it's a bit noisy. So you put a hard shell on top of it to protect you from wind and um, to, to, quiet, to quiet up your down. Hear that? That quiets your down up. So there's a strategy behind the madness. Now, secret weapon time. I've been using this this year. And this is a heated vest. For those of you out there that have already started using heated vest, you're shaking your head like, yes, that is the, that is the, one of the, the major tricks. I don't think it solves every problem, but it does solve some problems. Um, so what, what you do is there's a, a battery. So I, I keep a bunch of these little batteries. I just throw them in my pack. They're relatively cheap nowadays. Um, but all you have to do is, and, and mine's actually a solar battery too. So you get the solar battery ready, you hold this button in right here, and there's different, there's different colors for the different levels of, you know, how warm do you want the jacket. For me, I like to keep it on red, that's the warmest. Um, but let me explain the benefit and why I'm using this the way I am. So obviously, you know, if you're, if you're in a box blind, you could use a buddy heater. But a lot of guys don't have the luxury, especially if they're hiking out onto public land and they're just sitting down somewhere uh, and they don't have the luxury of a box blind or you know they're exposed to the elements. Well, I can feel this thing already heating up and it heats up around your neck too, which is really important, keeping that neck nice and warm and holding that heat in. So what I'll do if I'm sitting is I'll wear my down jacket and my, my hard shell on top of the vest and it keeps you super warm. Um, now when I'm doing a hunt like I am on, you know, with Heath out in the public land and we're moving, um, I usually just wear my Merino wool from Scree underneath this vest, uh, or both vests. So I'll take the, the only thing I'm taking out is the down. I'll keep it in my pack. It packs up that big. I'll throw it in my backpack. So I'm basically just wearing my base layer, which is Merino wool. And then I have the heated vest and then I had the hard scrabble vest. And I have a lot of mobility in my arms. And not only that, it keeps me from getting sweated up too much. But here's the kicker. 
sometimes when you're hunting in the snow and you're moving a certain way into the wind, right? And what I like to do is get up kind of on an edge where I can see down into a ravine, but I can also see the flat that I'm, that I'm on the edge of. And, and sometimes it's better, it just depends on how thick it is and where you're at. Sometimes I go right down the middle of the ravine and I can see the side walls and the deer stand out a lot more in the snow. But what I like to do is if we run into some does or we run into a group of, uh, of deer, um, what I like to do is if I have to stop and I have to wait for them to move through before we can go around them, um, you're going to get cold because you don't have your down jacket on. You don't want to get it out because it's noisy and you've got to sit there for a while. Just hit the button and turn your vest on. So I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Those are the two ways I use it. I either use it with nice insulation where I'm sitting for a full day or if I'm on the move, I just wear that vest with a hard vest on top of it and then I can heat it up whenever I want. If I have to sit still for a while, it's a game changer. You're going to be glad that you had it. So I put a link in the description, guys. It's called the Go Hunt Vest. Um, if you are interested in the Go Hunt Vest, click that link in the description and it'll take you right to where you can purchase one. Um, they're actually pretty inexpensive. I mean, it's, it's well, well, well worth the investment.